Navigating through the tricky waters of dating and relationships while sustaining a positive mindset can be challenging. In a world dominated by social media, ever-growing sexual desires and underlining insecurities, as founder of Lipstick Stain Passport, I'm on a mission to expose and identify the core principles and bitter truths of the dating world. Travel through the highs and lows with me, Robert Van Tromp, as I highlight and discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. First and foremost, Emily, thank you for coming in. Um, amazing to see you again. And I think um, really when I was told about doing a podcast, I was like, okay, I don't really have any idea of what I want to talk about. I was like, I'm just going to get my mates in and talk about shit, shit and sex, which is good topics. Don't get me wrong at the end of the day. But um, really for for you, I I think everyone... When when anytime I'm on uh, public transport, I see people like in um, in public. They're always like, "Oh, what's what's Emily like? You know, is she like is she really cool?" Do they? And then yeah, I mean, actually, I was on this really quiet train once, right? And then we got off, and then someone said to me, "He goes, oh, can I ask you like a really really important question?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, of course you can." She goes, "Why are you whispering?" She goes, "Cam and Emily still together?" I thought. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> is that what I, is that what my life's at now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh. I was like, I was like, yeah, they are. They are still together. <laughs> oh, that's actually really nice to know yeah. people care about me that much. I suppose. Yeah. But that, that they go to the, the lengths of asking you how I am. Literally, that's really quite yeah. nice. Actually, it is. And you know what? I think um, I think having you on, and I think and you being part of that series of two what to handle you became a role model you know I'm, I, don't think I'm, I, don't, I, I don't i don't even think I, I don't even think i'm bigging you up when i say this but you became a role model and you also became someone that people look up to particularly young females mm -hmm. would you would you agree yeah no i mean for my sins yes yeah and how do you think that having left the show how is it how have things changed are things a lot different from what they used to be um, I mean, yes, lifestyle it has changed immensely. I mean, I used to be out partying all the time and now I can only party some of the time because now I actually have responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually have work to do. Because people actually view your Instagram stories now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're saying. That yeah. is essentially, yes, what I'm yeah. saying. Okay. Um, but no, like you said, you know, now people like, I suppose you could say, look up to me. Mm. So I've got to, you know, kind of be on my shit a little bit and... Yeah. yeah, I've had to grow up. Yeah. Actually, that's yeah. that's the main thing. I've had to grow up. Yeah, I think. Well, I think, I think you were always growing up. When I when I first met you, I thought, okay, like you know, well, actually, when I first met you, one of the first things you said to me was, oh, did, you, "Did you not want to go on a date with me?" And I was like, "Whoa, okay, Emily Millis in the house." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what happened was, um, Christina had obviously come in with with Cam, linked arms, and then all the drama kind of occurred. And I sat there and thinking, what? What have I just arrived into? Everyone's kind of coming up I in arms. Sorry to interrupt. I actually remember seeing your face when you first walked in, <laughs> and it's literally the face you're pulling now. <laughs> that is literally the same face that so you haven't changed at all. <laughs> but it was that moment where we sat down, and you were like, "Oh, okay, um, you know, oh, I'm, I'm done with Cam." Da, 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 okay, and then you're like, "Did you not want to go on a date with me?" And I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I was like. Okay, I mean, I only had a, ch a choice, well, a choice of five, should we say, inverted commas, of who I wanted to go on a date with. But I mean, like, obviously, the show's happened. Did you ever think that you were going to meet and actually have a meaningful connection with someone on a dating show? Absolutely not. I thought it was a load of shit. Like, even, like as soon as I came out, my friends were like, you're joking. Because they knew my intentions going into the show was just to, you know, hook up, get fucked. And <laughs> no, no, literally and physically. <laughs> <laughs> She's not joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, like, I never, ever dreamt of meeting someone that mm. I genuinely love and, yeah, I want to have a future with. Amazing. So, yeah, Amazing. I know. Yeah. And do you like obviously you said that things have changed quite a lot and I've, I've been with you in, in circumstances where, you know, like people have been like, Oh, Emily can have a photo. Emily can have a photo. How has that been? How has that, how has that from being the lovely Emily from Berkhamsted with 
Twix, by the way, the best dog in the world. Yeah. How's that? How's that trying to get us now to being, like I said, up being a role model, being someone, being a, a relatable person that people can look up to. And I think, but looking at your stories, how they are always incredibly relatable. I think it's easy to, when you have a lot of, a lot of followers on Instagram to almost change, change that part of your personality. And like you said, because there's more of a focus on you, but I think you've done a fantastic job at obviously maintaining that image of that kind of quirky, unique persona really? that you have. Yeah. And I think people love that about you. Oh, thanks. Well, I mean, it's not like I try. It's just like, I can't be anyone but myself mm. even on the show you have touched on it briefly earlier saying yeah. oh she really like that in person like people don't think that's what I'm like but yeah. that I, I cannot be someone I'm not so and I feel like that even like portrays on my stories like yeah. I, I look at like people like Molly May and you know it's all very aesthetically pleasing mm. things like that and I just can't do that so I don't even bother trying like yeah. so I just stick to what I know stick basically. to what you know yeah. exactly if it's not broke don't fix it right, right? that's right? it yeah. Yeah, 100%. yeah and I feel like the whole world has seen me you know, at my realist anyway. So what's the point of trying to be something I'm not? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And with regards to kind of your boundaries and your expectations with men, you know, you've always been very open with me as, as your friend, kind of growing up, you had more of a relationship with, with mum than you necessarily did with dad. Mm. Do you have expectations and, and standards that you expect now from men? But well, can obviously, but 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 also individuals that you would have dated prior to the show. Is that something that, that you think about, or do you think subconsciously happens? Definitely subconsciously. Okay. Um, I know for a fact that all my exes have all said that I have daddy issues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe subconsciously, I've had all these standards that I'm not aware of. Yep. Um, I think I must have. Um, you know, my dad not being present for like the late latter of my life. Um, yeah, I must have had some sort of standards because all my exes seem to think I did. Right, but, but at the same time, though, you obviously you said the, the lovely term daddy issues. But I mean, you obviously, in, in essence, has made you the strong woman that you are, the strong independent woman that mm. you are today. Yeah. And, and actually the expectations that you expect and standards you expect from men in a day to day has probably shifted because of that. Mm. Yeah, no, you actually, you're right. You're right. And, um, much to Cam's dismay. Yeah. I yeah. think it is because, you know, it's just general stuff like day to day that I just, it thinks normal, but to Cam, I guess it's not. I think that's, no. where, I think that's where a lot of our arguments stem from. Well, look, relationships all about compromise at the end of the day, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Compromise city, baby. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it kind of, it kind of leads me on to, it's like today, I guess we've, we've gone with a topic of relationship status unknown. And it's a very kind of mysterious topic because it not only touches on why, um, why relationships are not so difficult to, to get into, but it's that, that gray area and that awkward moment where we have met someone for a few times and we're not really sure where it's going. Do they like us? Are they, into, is he, is he or she into me? Like, are we already planning a wedding day? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and a lot of the time we get it wrong. Mm. Let's, let's be like, whether it's yourself, whether it's your friends, how often, how often can you talk from your own experience whereby we have thought we were more into something than we were, then maybe a nice shiny new card comes along and actually you think actually I'm more into that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's happened over and over again. I feel like it's quite exactly. normal, especially yeah. when you're single, you know, you have no commitments, you know, so you do, you just yeah. jump ship to ship to ship. But um, yeah, God, they were the good old days. Huh? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 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 uh, I always find it a strange one because I've recently downloaded, recently oh downloaded. God, oh, no, I've recently downloaded. Oh God, So hear me out, hear me out. Oh. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. So I, I haven't touched like the Tinders and the Bumbles for a long time. Well, you're right, on okay. Grindr now. Is it Grindr, Grindr? Yeah, back on the Grindr now, Joe. <laughs> but basically I, um, I downloaded Hinge. Because I heard good heard good feedback about I've it. I've heard good things about Hinge. Good feedback. You only had seven likes per seven likes per day. Okay, oh. but the basis but the basis of the of of the, of the discussion, right? Okay, is um, you can have a great conversation with someone, which which I have how I have done. I've matched with them. Great. Yeah. I have a conversation with them, and then all of a sudden you get a notification comes in. Oh, someone else likes your photo, and then you go onto a onto that person's profile. I think, oh, okay, that person's probably more of a better, better fit. fit for me. She's probably more my type. Like, but actually, and completely disregarding 
the good conversation I've just had with the last right. person. It's because our, our dating app's making that easier for us to do. Yeah, they're, they're making people more accessible. Mm. And you just, yeah, I think this day and age, you just don't really care too much about people's feelings because there's so many of fish in the sea. You just think, oh, let's have a bit of each. Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> I'll have what more it is, than one really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and because yeah. especially men think they can get away with, you know, chatting to all these girls at the mm. same time. And I don't know, like for you, do you like playing hard to get? Well, not even playing hard to get, but one thing one thing I will say is I think ghosting is a real thing and it, and it comes in so many forms. But it's savage. It can be savage. And it's savage. But what, what I think what I think um, people have in their perspective of, of ghosting and to what other people may look at it are very, very different. So not to sound like a complete nerd, but I actually searched up the five main reasons as to why someone might get ghosted. Is this right, because okay. you got ghosted? <laughs> I'm just, are you a bit still, heartbroken, Rob? Still paying from experience <laughs> from years ago, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but basically, it came down to like game of, gamification of dating. So just people seeing it as a game, as we talked about. Right. Uh, fixed mindset about relationships. So maybe you've had a bad experience in the past and you don't want to kind commit. Of, you don't want to commit. Yeah. yeah. We've got dating someone else. As you mentioned, you have your fingers in lots of different pies. Yeah. Low emotional intelligence. Ah, men. <laughs> <laughs> Sums them up, really. Well, I mean, it's, it's an interesting area, isn't it? And it's an area that probably doesn't get talked about enough. Um, and you know, if you, well, if you had to give your advice to, let's say, um, a female who has just come out of a relationship and wants to start dating. Okay. And then finds herself in a situation where she is getting ghosted left, right and center. What advice would you give that person? If so, if you just come out of a relationship and you're getting ghosted left, right and center, yeah. uh, that, uh, that's not, okay like there must be something wrong with you you know yeah. maybe her chat game's weak mm. you know maybe her self-confidence is weak mm. and she's going for the wrong guys you know maybe yeah maybe that's probably it she's probably yeah. going for the wrong guys so yeah. you know i'd like to evaluate her and see where she's going wrong and yeah i don't know i'm really yeah. bad with advice but that, i mean that'd no, be, that'd, I think that'd that's, be where i start from yeah no i think that's i think that's good advice and literally brings one to the fifth reason and that's because of fear of hurting people's feelings which is a weird one right because I know from my own experiences when I have ghosted, not necessarily ghosted people, but maybe I was chatting to, to multiple women at the same time. Mm. And in my eyes as a man, I thought maybe it would be the easier route for me to say to a girl or sorry, sorry to not say anything to a girl uh. rather than say, I'm sorry, we're not on the same page or we're not reading from the same yeah. book. It's that confrontation, you know? <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. And yeah. maybe maybe I look back and think I've probably shied away from conflict when actually the easier route would have probably have been... To be open To be honest. open and honest. Yeah. I th you know, I think it's because, as, as mentioned, probably from past experiences for me, I've, t I've been in situations where I've said, you aren't my type or we are not the right fit. And they'd be like, well, 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 well what is the What's right fit? What is the right fit? And it's like, well, well nothing's wrong with you. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think because people always, no matter whether you're male or female, we automatically put our guard up. Right, 100%. For. Yeah. I don't know why I'm sitting here acting yeah. like I'm like a saint. Like, trust me. <laughs> I used to, I think I used to be a boy, like yeah. in my single life. Like, yeah, I was, I was say, like, savage. <laughs> like, I was savage. Like, I would. I would go from guy to guy, you know, not give them any explanation as to why I'm not talking to them anymore, mm. you know, sleep with their friends, openly. Well, like, sorry, let's part that one up a bit. Rewind <laughs> <laughs> that. You used to, what? Oh, yeah, like when I was single, I wouldn't give a fuck. Like, so, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just, so on. Well you would be dating them, okay, right. and then, and if, what, if things were, st even if things were going well, you would still take their friends? Mm, the thing or if, is, like, or was it like a big, or was it big, like, you've messed me about? No, you're gonna... sometimes it was a big, like, fuck you. But then yeah. other times, no, they're probably, the, the other person would have done nothing wrong. I just would have got bored. Oh, that, oh, that's the thing. I used to get bored so easy. Like, I have an attention span of a fish. Mm. So, yeah, I would literally just, cause I, as well, because I would go out every weekend. You know, I'd meet new hot guys and then they would tempt me. Accessibility, like we said. Right, exactly. And, you know, you always think the grass is greener. Mm. And so. And it's not, 
the right. a lot of the time. A hundred percent, exactly. It's greener where you water it most. Yeah, but the, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but then that's when it started getting yeah. toxic because I'd realised the grass wasn't green. I then mm. want to go back and that's when you're in that vicious cycle of, you know, yeah, toxicity. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Great word. Great use Thank of the you. word. Thank yeah. You. And actually, quite quite right, as you mentioned, because you're quite um, upfront and quite direct with your approach and I think the clientele that were on to what to handle, particularly with the females were more more like that way inclined. Um, I don't know whether they did deliberately in terms of casting, probably did, but that kind of female generally gets, in today's society, probably gets more of what they want right. when it comes with with dating men, would you yeah. say? Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, because yeah Maybe because they don't, they, don't, they don't stick around when they don't feel like they need to anymore. Yeah. Would you say that's a fair? Yeah, and even with myself, I even, um, I can't remember if they even aired it now, but even on the show, I said to Cam, and he was like mucking me around saying, mm. I don't know if I want this. I just said, I was like, listen, please just tell me now because I will happily move on to yeah. anyone else. Robert's just come in, Cam. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 I've got you know a local I mean? Harvard yeah. boy in here that I will happily yeah. move to. Have you seen that awful dyed hair he's got? Like, <laughs> that's a bit of me, Cam. <laughs> what was with that hair? Honestly, I'm looking at you now. Like that is so yeah. much nicer. Like, what, oh. what possessed you? Do you know it's a lot of time in isolation, and it's a lot of John Frieda hairspray. <laughs> Not bored yeah. Of. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Hey, Fair enough. but look, you know, at least someone. We live what, and we learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we at did. least you've had a glow up. You know, it's better that you've had a glow up than a glow down. Can you imagine if it had it hit the decline? Yeah. But I'm not, well, actually, you could argue it's better to have it go down because millions of people watch the show. But yeah, I mean, yeah. look, we could save that for another time. Yeah, right? yeah, true, true. <laughs> but, um, in terms of your own dating experiences, so you mentioned you obviously with the, the, the friends, the boyfriends or whatever, but um, your own dating experiences, have you got one that stands out to you where you think, Rob, wow, this one was, that was bad. Like it was a really bad memory. Yeah. Have you got one of those? Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, I don't know why I talk like that just then. <laughs> yeah. Right, I would never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like I'm just going to, like, the thing is, I'm an open book, as mm. I said in my, um, to handle, <laughs> yeah. open set of legs, hun. Yeah. Um, so this was that, actually, in this instance, the case. So it was in Ibiza, uh, 2020. And I was literally there for like two weeks. You know, just single, living mm. my life. And um, I started sleeping with this guy that was really fit that was in my hotel and then he had a friend that was really fit so then I started sleeping with that friend too and then this other friend had a friend who was really fit so I started sleeping with this friend too uh, and well, I thought I was being really clever like bouncing them off each other you know yeah. spending the day with one of them the night with another one and until I discovered how close they actually were and all three of them knew about me and I came down to the pool one day and I was like, oh, hi. And like, no one was talking to me. And I was like, what's going on? And I said to my friend, what the fuck's going on? And she was like, Emily, they all know about you. I was like, oh, t t taxi? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, a anyone? It's a, it's yeah. A, it's I was like, oh, yeah. I, I think I left my shit in the room. I literally scooed, what is it, scooed, scowled off. <laughs> uh, I probably, yeah, I didn't think I returned. I was devastated. Uh, oh, wow. I That's know. Uh... As my time went on in Elvita, I just sort of, you know, progress to a third person. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like, I didn't really know what else there is to say. Like, I just thought I was being clever and, you know, saw an opportunity. Saw an opportunity, went yeah. for gold. And yeah, but to be fair, like, I, when I was, I actually handled it like a man. Mm. I, uh, when I got discovered, I just sort of sat them all down and I said, I was like, listen, I was like, if you was in my position, you'd done the same thing. Just because I'm a girl, is that my phone? Sorry. It's mine. I thought I had fucking so sorry <laughs> silence. Shit. <sighs> um, and I yeah, so I had it like a man. I literally sat them all down one by one, not all together, because that'd be a bit weird. <laughs> and yeah. well, well, the story was going there, Em. <laughs> okay. And I just said, yeah. like, listen, I'm single. I can do yeah. what I want. Like, yeah. if this was you, you'd do exactly the same thing. Mm. And actually, do you know what? They all went, yeah, fairs. And, that, and now they're all still friends, I think. And I mean, I don't talk to any of them anymore, but that's besides the point. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you weren't, you, I mean, I you, weren't in, you, weren't, you weren't in a relationship. They weren't in a relationship. So, right. you know, at the end of the day, we were all just having fun and, right. you know, just having to be free in the same friendship. I know. And 
they were, they were all staying in my hotel. <laughs> Literally, this is my room. One was next door to me, one that was opposite me, and the other one was down the hall. Yeah. It was so convenient. Well, the walk of shame, I bet it wasn't far one though, was it? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I just like hop over the balconies. That's it. Like Spider-Man. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> So that's one of my worst yeah. dating story. Amazing. Well, you could say a dating, <laughs> sex story, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Amazing. And um, so we're gonna do we're gonna, we're gonna do we're gonna do two games at the end. So as you're probably aware, we always do uh, bedroom dilemmas. Well, I do yes. every single week, and um, always very insightful because we always learn about people's. I don't want to say the word problems because it sounds quite negative, mm. but. Areas of improvement, <laughs> areas of improvement um, within the bedroom, um, and um, the, the the stories we have are always relatively fruitful um, that I hear from people all around the globe. Um, so that will be one of our games. We're going to talk about, and and you, Emma, are going to be actually summarising the recommendations okay. this time. Okay, for 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 the two lucky people. Okay, mm -hmm. but before we do that, we've got a Squid Game theme. <laughs> You're like, I love oh Squid my game. God. The game is going to be called Red Talk Flag, Red Flag, Green Flag. Oh, <laughs> and that original. took a whole evening to come up with that one, guys. Oh my God, round of applause. <laughs> oh no, okay. sorry. That was probably too loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I want you to come up with is um, two green flags that you would have for men or for a potential man that you would date and then the two red flags. Okay. Okay, so the two, two big the, bad the red flags. The typical green and red flags that I would look for. Not even, oh, I'd, like, I'd like to say you wouldn't look for the red flag, <laughs> to be honest. No, but girl, I mean, girls look for red flags, trust me. We, like, oh we would love a red flag. Yeah, it's so much baggage. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a bit of me, that. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, okay, so... Really, yeah, what we want to do here is we want to, I want you to think about what your two, two absolute musts are, should we say, two okay. absolute yeah, must-haves yeah. in a relationship yeah. as your green flag. Yeah. And then we want to have, think about, okay, what kind of things we want to avoid yeah. as part of a, as yeah. a red flag moment, yeah. okay? So we're going to kickstart with the green flags. Yeah. So what two things would you say that you would potentially look for or you think a girl should look for as a um, green flag? Big dick and drug dealer. Um, not really the way I planned the game to be. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I hadn't really anticipated that answer, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm just going to refer back to my notes. <laughs> Sorry, okay. do you want me to redo that's that? Not, do you want not, 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 what, not, not what I had planned. Um, Sorry, do you want me to redo that? Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> do we, do we do that? no, we'll, like, we'll, we'll keep that okay, one. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. and um, and then red flag. What would you say? Uh, what would you say are the, are the key red flags for you? Um, key red flags for me are not funny. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, yeah. they're boring. Yeah. don't make me laugh. No sense of humor. No sense of humor. Yeah, okay. we'll go with that. No sense of humor. And second red flag. Turning the phone upside down. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. You know but what? I'll be honest, as a, as a bloke, we do it. Just turn off notifications. You don't have to turn it upside down. <laughs> it, Cam still does that. What? Turns his phone turns upside down in front of me. Oh, dear. I know. Cam, if you're listening, that is a, yeah. that is a red flag. You better butt your <laughs> ideas up, boy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, what? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, yeah, that two very elaborate green flags. And valid. And and valid. Uh, and uh, I think and I think for the for the red flags as well. Absolutely. I know, right? Yeah. So we'll just get kickstarted on the uh, on the the bedroom dialogue. Yeah, right? let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and as I mentioned to uh, as I mentioned to Emily. Um, the ones I receive every single week are let's enlightening. It, enlightening, absolutely. And but one thing I will also say is the ones I actually do share with my Instagram are the more tame ones. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I can't put the other half on there because they're either directly sexually related to me or are quite uh, explicit. 
Explicit is actually probably not doing it justice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I actually think they're they're incredibly rogue. Okay. Yeah, right, <laughs> okay. yeah, we're doing it. But okay, so the first one we've got today. Wait, so we're doing the rogue ones, right? Well, <laughs> you can you can tell me after these. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so the first one we've got is what happens if you if you can't climax with your partner without shouting your ex's name. <laughs> That's not. She's lying. That's not real. <laughs> That's yeah. not real. I mean, we say this every week, but I mean, people are still sending them in. So Surely not. I, 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 it's one of those moments I'd like to think isn't real. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I'm just sure. trying to picture it. Like I'm yeah. trying to... Well, I mean... So obviously she's done it for her to realise that she, that's a problem. Mm. Um, which is... Weird. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm actually speechless. Is, is she deliberately doing it? Or would you say that it's... She needs therapy. Uh, she Yeah. No, seriously, she needs yeah. therapy because yeah. that's, that, that's not okay. Yeah. She, as well, actually, so where... So this is, so, so, so to clarify, this is going to be your recommendation, right? Okay. Right, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Emily Miller, I, I, green light, let's go. Oh, wait, what? No, this is your recommendation. Well, that was like a green light kind oh, of. Oh, go, 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 go! go. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're like, what game are we playing again? <laughs> so okay. the way I the yeah. way I can break it down is, you know, we're all creatures of habit. Mm. So, you know, there's certain ways we all like to check off. For example, you know, there's certain things that make us orgasm and come. So obviously, this is a habit of hers that you know she relates to orgasming, and she needs to break that habit. Um. How you do that, I'm not professional. That's why I think you should go get therapy. But it's a habit that she needs to break. But yeah, it's definitely a habit. I mean, imagine yeah. doing that every time. I mean, you wouldn't have... Sure, the, the real question here should be, why is she still with the the, the, the boyfriend, surely? I mean, that, why is the boyfriend still with her? Yeah. I'm sorry, if that was me and she's got ear muffs on. His, <laughs> that could be a solution. Hit her just covering his ears. <laughs> well. <laughs> or maybe she... Gag yourself. Gag yourself. Yeah, uh, um, no, you yeah. know the sexy, sexy ones. Yeah, gag yourself. Yeah. Oh my god, the ball and chain. Yeah, because then maybe he would find it sexy, yeah. and then therefore she's. she's she'll be like, ah, and then he'll uh, oh. Kieran. Kieran. <laughs> That's my brother. Oh shit! Oh my oh, god! Oh, no, it's, we're not sexually talking about your brother. Uh, this is right uh, to the next dilemma. So oh, well, here we go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> okay. She always makes she always makes jokes about the size in the bedroom. Started off funny, now self conscious. Oh, that's not nice. And I I am um, not a victim. What's the opposite? I'm not a. You're, <laughs> you're, a, you're that. a victim. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> you're I'm a victim of that. Okay. No, no. All what's right, the yeah. opposite? You know when you said yeah. that to people. Yeah. What is that word? You you've been in that situation. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah. I've what were you where you've where you've joked about? I've it. joked about the size of their penis to the fact where they then couldn't get it up, and it's not. Yeah, it's oh, not man. okay. It's not nice, and I really feel for your boyfriend or whoever he is. Um, you need to really just nurse him now, and you know, tell him that it's perfect and you love it, and you know, caress it, and you know, slap it all over your face, and just. Right, and we are still live, just to confirm this is not. Sorry, but sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really got into it then, uh, but no, you seriously, yeah, you need to nip that in the bud, and you know, really let him know that you were joking, um, because that that damages the guy's ego, and then that could stay with him for life. And you, you, yeah, seriously. Right. So if we had to say to summarize, to summarize on that one, Emily, we were saying what. Be more careful with what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know. How do you like it if he makes fun of your fucking tits? Says how small your tits are. <laughs> I can't with you. It's your face when you say it. It's your face. I can't. I can't. It's because it's a straight face that you say it. It's true. It's true. It's, it's actually a really valid point. Yeah, right. No, you're actually, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, it's actually very, very valid. Yeah. Um, and we should be more careful about what we say. 100%. Yeah. Because performance anxiety, a real thing. Yeah. Absolutely really a real thing. It really is. Yeah. I can, I can vouch. 
for me too. You know, yeah. I've been called small tits, and I've punched them in the face. And she's probably not lying about that. Oh, no. So, <laughs> okay, amazing. Well, moving on. Well, yeah. I mean, Emily. Oh, we're ending. It's been. Oh, babe. I'm sorry. I'm I know. Really nice time. I know. I do you know what? I kind of wish that we made your session an hour, and everyone else is like twenty minutes. Oh my god! I thought you were going to tell me that I've had the shortest session, and you've made everyone else's. No, name. no, okay, no, fine. no. Okay. No. I was about to kick off. No. No, they would do okay, that to you. Okay. Particularly after what your boyfriend did earlier. Yeah. Okay. But Oh right. <laughs> okay. All right then. Yeah, there's enough space between us and the table. <laughs> Emily, but um thank you so much for coming in. And like I said, you know, absolute role model for so many people around the globe now. International programme, international role model, and um genuinely, genuinely people as nice as she comes across on TV, she's even nicer in person oh. and a genuine, genuine speak up. So thanks for having us on. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening, guys. Please rate and review the episode and then head over to my Instagram to follow Lipstick Stain Passport and then send me across your bedroom dilemmas. Bye.